The following video is endorsed by Jono Plays. Hi everyone, Lois here, and here's my latest interview. I'll be interviewing my pal Jono Plays of the YouTube channel Jono Plays. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for alerts of when I upload new content to the channel, especially those with disabilities similar to mine. As part of my Road to Cozumel series, I have agreed to sit down with an interview with my good friend Jono as we'll talk about his YouTube career and the stuff he does on there, mainly Pokemon and what he likes about Pokemon and other things. And I'm joined by my pal Jono of Jono Plays. What's up, you guys? It's Jono! <laughs> And of course, my pal Jono, you can see him stream almost every night on his YouTube channel. It's true. I, I do it every night. It's crazy, but I've been doing it for years now. And of course, Jono is one of my fellow Pokemon YouTubers who I met through the community. Yep, yep. Uh, mostly just, just playing on my Switch these days. Uh, yeah. Pokemon on Switch is pretty good. I recommend it. Here's my switch, Jono. There you go. There you go. Very nice. And I'll be getting Scarlet and Violet for Christmas. Yes. Oh, for Christmas? Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm going to get it on launch day, and I cannot wait. Oh, it's going to be so good. All right. Um. First question. What is your favorite Pokemon game, and what region do you like? Okay, I am a true Cantonian, so of course I loved Pokemon Let's Go. The 3D animation style was extremely good. The shiny hunting with combo method was extremely good. Uh, of course, I'm a Cantonian, so can't go wrong with Kanto. And yeah, I, I just thought that overall it was a fantastic game. I thought it was so good that I spent three years getting the shiny living decks, which I did finally complete just gonna pat myself right on the back there <laughs> congratulations on that one <laughs> thank you thank you and of course my favorite region of course i love kanto but hoen is for me because i love the tropical climate and the fact that you get to dive underwater oh yeah well i'm hoping one day i can experience the joys of johto hoen alola and many others i'm i'm fingers crossed that eventually they will re-release the original games on the switch like they've released old games, like 007 is coming out, the old N64 game. I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, I'm like, please just give us the old games. I just want to play them because I don't have a DS, you know. Well, I had a D. Oh, I only have a 3DS, but of course, I also happen to like Johto. But I also, in addition to Hoenn, let's just say, yeah, Sinnoh is also awesome because it's based on the. Japanese island of Hokkaido. Oh, I did not know that. Oh. Because the first, because the, the island, the first four regions of Pokemon are actually based on parts of Japan. Like Kanto hmm. is based on Kanto. Johto is based on Chibu and Kansai. Hoenn is based on the island of Kyushu, which also includes Okinawa, which is what Evergrande City is based on. And lastly, the Sinnoh region is based on the island of o Hokkaido. Bro, you're like a genius. How do you know all that stuff? <laughs> I did a lot of my research online. Oh, man. Oh, man. My hat's off to you. Good, sir. That's like some really smart stuff right there. It would take me a year to memorize all that. <laughs> well, well, Gen 5 is based on, well, Unova's Gen, Gen, Gen 5 Unova region is based on the New York City area, which I actually have been to in real life. I did not know that. What? Wow. And then you have Gen 6 with Kalos being based on France. Okay, that I did know. And then, wait, is Gen 7 Hawaii? Yes. Aurora. Okay, and then Gen 8 is the UK. Everybody Correct. knows that. But wait, what is Gen 9 going to be based on? Spain. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yes. With Lechonk. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh did you know this i have a fun fact did you know that lechon is a traditional spanish um like they roast pork oh, it's the name of a food lechon 
Oh, I didn't know that's what the, how the Pokemon got its name. Yep, yep, yep. I I saw that in Twitter comments, so I can't take full credit for that. I love reading down, you know, down on the Cerebi comments and down on, well, pretty much just the Cerebi comments, but yeah. Okay, I have another question. How okay. did you get into Pokemon? Okay, well, I was alive in the 90s when Pokemon came out. And I watched the kid. I watched the TV show, the anime, uh, on Saturday mornings, of course, just like every kid who was alive at that time. You know, there's so certain it was in shows. syndication first. It was actually in syndication <clears throat> first before it went to Kids WB. Yeah, I may have been watching it in syndication, but I do distinctly remember when. For those of you who don't know, syndication is when they play reruns. So when you watch reruns of stuff, that's or, syndication or stuff on that, different networks or new stuff that doesn't air on 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 national tv oh 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 i did not know that i mostly just think of syndication as reruns but yeah that makes sense too as for me in the fall of 98 i used to watch it on my local upn now cw station um. until it moved to my local wb which of course is now no longer a wb station because of the merger of the wb and upn into the right. cw that is where I first seen the Pokemon anime, but I first found out about Pokemon when I was subscribed to Nintendo Power Magazine in 1998. Oh, wow. That's how Way I back. found out. That's how I found out about the games. That's how I found out about red and green versions. Right, right. Yeah, I wasn't as much into the games when they were like. I think Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow were like in the 1996 time period. And I wasn't playing Pokemon much at that at that point. I may have, you know, played it a little bit, but uh, I mostly just watched the anime. Yeah, that's when I first got introduced to Pokemon. That's how I first heard about Pokemon. And fun fact, Jono, Pokemon was actually in development since 1990. It was. Oh, really? Yeah, it didn't. It di wasn't released. It took them that long to launch the game. Yeah, because Game wow. Freak also had other projects, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense because they're probably, you know, developing games like almost kind of like how Ilka developed Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. You know, they're like doing it for other they're doing it for Game Freak. But when Game Freak was first getting started, they were, you know, probably doing the same thing, making games for other companies, too. Well, technically, Game Freak did make, I think, yeah, they made the Yoshi game, which is a Tetris oh, really? like puzzle game. They made that they made that for for nintendo right right because yoshi's part of the mario franchise right yeah yeah and of course game freak also developed other they also developed the um the, the, yeah they also developed certain games i think pulse man is one of them for the sega genesis right yeah, in other words, this is all these long before Game Freak was known for developing Pokemon. And it makes sense, you know, because if you're a bunch of developers sitting around at a development company, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to take development clients and, you know, develop things for them. So, yeah, it stands to reason. I actually didn't know that, though. That's very interesting to me. And not to mention, they also, yeah, not only, yeah, they all, yeah, though, Pulse Man was only in, I believe, I'm not sure if it was ever I'll check to see if it was probably it was, wasn't released to the Americans, right? It was actually, probably just in Japan. Actually, did come actually did come out here in, in the United States in '95 as part of the Sega Channel, and then it was uh, re-released on Virtual Console. Right. Otherwise, it did have a physical cartridge cartridge release in Japan, and then they also developed another game for Nintendo that was only in Japan: Mario and Wario. Oh yeah, huh? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I never played that obviously because it was just in Japan. I was I was talking about old video game systems the other night on my live stream. And did you know that the the Nintendo Entertainment System in Japan was called Famicom? Yeah. And the Super actually, Nintendo was the Super Famicom? Actually, I was aware of that. And Famicom was short for family computer. Oh, I you know, I I, I knew that, but I had forgotten it. And that's cool you reminded me. Yes, that's how that's how I Family that's Computer, how... Famicom. Wow. <clears throat> See, and, I thought it was like a super cool like race car name or, you know, like what they yeah, were just trying to sound cool yeah, or something. That's actually yeah. a really nerdy, like simple name. Like, but, you know, a, a hardware company at that time probably would have been named that. Think about it. 
Jono, um, I have another question to ask you. Okay. If you could, would you really travel to to these countries that actually inspired some of these Pokemon games? Like, like generations- go to Japan, or you mean go to like the like Spain and France because the regions are based off those places? Sort of, but if you had to choose, would you go to Japan and visit the the parts of the country that inspired the regions from the first four generations? Here's the deal. I would go to Japan, but I would go to the koi farming towns where they actually do all of the like the really traditional like family koi breeding. And it's a um, couple of small towns where they do that. And I'm like weirdly obsessed with koi breeding and koi like in general. It's a type of fish. But um, yeah, I that's where I would go. I know what a koi <laughs> if I was going to go all the way to Japan, that's where I would go. I know what a koi is. I've seen them in ponds and heck, I even seen yep. I even seen some up scuba diving up at Dutch Springs. Whoa, really? Nice. Yeah. And I forgot to mention, Ekerti City in Johto is actually based on Kyoto. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, I picked up a bunch of really weird hobbies during the pandemic, uh, mostly through just like watching really long YouTube videos. They're, they're not even actual hobbies. I don't do these things, but I'm like weirdly interested in them now. So yeah, I've been watching a lot of Koi documentaries. I got kind of sucked down the rabbit hole on that. It's a fascinating topic, though. Okay, I have another question to ask that relates to Pokemon. Um, okay. What is your favorite anime, the, the po- favorite Pokemon, favorite incarnation of the anime? The original series, the ones where they're in Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, Unova, Kalos, Alola, or they go to all the regions in the current incarnation? Well, technically, I've only seen the first season of the anime when they went to Kanto. And then this is kind of a funny story because when I was a kid, I remember they started advertising that Ash was going to Johto because they're advertising the next season, you know? So they're, you know, the season's over and they're advertising the next season. That's how I know that I watched it at the time that it was actually running. It wasn't just reruns at that time because they were advertising the Johto season. And I remember thinking to myself as a kid, Why is Ash going to Johto? Ash has no need to go to Johto. He hasn't caught them all in Kanto. Ash never completed his Kanto Pokedex. And literally the theme song is, gotta Gotta catch catch them all, Pokemon. And and it's like, Ash, you need to finish. Like, I finished my Pokedex in the game. He can finish his too. So yeah, I, I didn't watch. I never watched again. I basically gave up on the series. I was like, you know what? I'm out. <laughs> I did give up on the anime around the um, advanced generation. I didn't get back. At, I've seen some episodes of Diamond and Pearl. I've seen some episodes of yeah. Black and White, X and Y, Sun and Moon. And of course, I've been watching all the um, episodes based on Gen 8 in on Netflix. I've been thinking about catching up because it's so easy to just pop it on and watch it while I'm at work. You know, I work from home. So, you know, just just turn it on. But yeah, I just haven't got around to it. I'm always watching ancient history videos instead. <laughs> speaking of speaking of the anime, there were some episodes, if you're not aware of, that were banned because of controversy. Like People mentioned this on my stream from time to time. But I don't know very much about it. But I know that Porygon got banned because he was blinking his lights too fast. Well, actually, the truth about that, that wasn't actually Porygon that caused those seizures. It was actually... Somebody Pikachu said it was Thunderbol- Pikachu. See, yeah, they argue Pikachu. about this stuff in my live chat, but I don't know any... I don't know. I've I, I've actually seen the banned episode online. And then there was I a- know I could find it. I know I could find it, you know? And then there was an episode involving... How Ash caught all his Tauros. Of course, it was banned because of guns. What did That's, he do? Oh, wait, Lord, is it not family Lord friendly? Lord, Can we not talk no, about what Ash did? <laughs> no, no, no. It's not what Ash did. It was actually what the Warden of the Safari Zone did. He had a gun. He actually had a gun. Oh. Okay, yeah. people, there, there's a few, whenever people talk about banned episodes, a few topics always come up, and one of them is a gun in Pokemon. So that's real. That was a real thing. Yeah, and oh. and then there were other episodes that were also banned or scrapped completely. Like some of the episodes from the Ruby and Sapphire series were ba- one of them was banned because of an earthquake quake at the time in Japan. And then and then there was oh yeah, because po- it's like a sensitive topic. 
What did they have exactly. an earthquake in the show? Yeah, because actually, yeah, involved, yeah, actually, it involved um the Pokemon um the evolved form of Wish Wish Cats is uh, uh, yeah Wish Cats. I mean, there's literally a move in the game called Earthquake, so yeah. it's like I mean it. <laughs> and then there was and then Team Plasma's debut in the black and white anime was delayed because of the earthquake and tsunami mm. from from 2011. Yeah, I do remember that. It was supposed to be called Team Rocket versus Team Plasma, but that never happened. Did they just never air the content? No, it was never aired at all. Wow. But can you still see it? Can you watch no, it? No, no. Whoa. No. So people aired. like know it exists, but like nobody's ever seen it. Exactly. That's crazy. And of course, if you're wondering about, wow. in addition to the main series, there are also some specials involving other characters, like the characters that you play as in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Ethan, of course, Gold. The first version of him, he's called Jimmy in the English version. He actually is the focus of of a of the plot that involves Ryko. Wow. And then the girl that, that you play as in Crystal, her name is Chris, but she's been renamed Marina in the anime. That's crazy. Yeah, I haven't played I haven't yeah, I haven't played any of those ones unfortunately, so I just don't know. Yeah. If you're wondering, did some of the the playable protagonists from the game Besides those two I mentioned appear, and yes, the second design, Gen Four, the Gen Four version of Ethan, known yeah, or Hibiki as he's known as in Japanese, did appear in the movie featuring Zoroark. Yeah, he did appear and he battled Ash, so in other words, he was reduced to a cameo. Huh. And then, and then the boy Brendan from Ruby and Sapphire, he had a cameo along with um the Lucas, the boy that Dawn mailed equivalent that you play as in the game in you know gen 4 i have yeah. played gen 4 so yeah lucas actually appears in the anime yeah i played bdsp when it came out and i'm really glad i got to play through that story because it made a whole bunch of stuff in pokemon legends arceus makes so much more sense and speaking of legends arceus what is your favorite what was your favorite moment during one of your streams when you caught the shinies oh well the you know what's crazy is the the shinies in Pokemon Legends Arceus, they I feel like I had better shiny reactions in Pokemon Let's Go because they just felt so much more rare and they were so hard they're so hard to get. And the massive mass outbreaks, it's like you're almost kind of expecting to get a shiny because you're at like a horde of that Pokemon. But um so far my favorite one was actually just a few days ago. We got a uh, shiny Porygon and a space time distortion and I thought I was never going to get shiny Porygon. They're super, super, super rare. And I find that I have way better shiny reactions on like really rare Pokemon. And and plus I had already given up on ever getting the shiny Porygon from a space-time distortion because the odds are so bad and the distortions are so rare. And then I went to Pokemon Let's Go and caught three shiny Porygons and transferred them through Pokemon Home to Pokemon Le uh, Legends Arceus. That. But then I got the the shiny Porygon out of nowhere. So I was like, oh my goodness. Like, so yeah, that was a that was just like a total shocker, like surprise. And I wish it would have been something I actually needed, but it was still so just pleasant and surprising that yeah, I had a really good reaction. It was very memorable. Um, of course, speaking of Legends Arceus, you are you're so right. The shiny rate is so easy it is so ridiculous because even even yeah. my friend Kiai even said that when she played the game when she and i'm not complaining game. or anything i mean it's great it's fun i'm getting chinese i'll get like five chinese in a stream and i did have streams on pokemon let's go where i got like four or five chinese in one night that was pretty rare but i they did happen but yeah they they're just a there's just something about it on Pokemon. Let's go like you target a certain Pokemon, but you don't know if it's going to spawn and there's other stuff that could spawn and, you know, they get pretty good spawn rate, but you you just don't know if you're going to get a shiny chancy or if you're going to get what you're actually targeting. But like Pokemon Legends Arceus, it, like you could pretty much be like one, two, three, I'm going to get a shiny right now, you know, and like you just kind of know it's coming sometimes. But I mean, obviously you couldn't literally do that, but I mean, 
if you did it 10 times, one of them, you would get the shiny. But anyway, yeah, they're, they're, I ain't complaining about easy shinies. I love me some easy shinies, but yeah, I, I think I have better reaction when it's not the easiest one. So this is some of my shiny collection. Oh, nice, nice, nice. I did. I just realized you're you're like on a green screen, or it's like deleting your background, and yeah, like I probably yeah, could have done that, but <laughs> yeah, it's on a green screen, Jono. It is because my I just have my green screen. Usually, no, it's no, greened no. out. The only reason why I'm doing this because I don't want you to see my background because my room. Is oh green. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're smart. You're smart. I I probably should have done that. I mean, I literally have the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. No big deal, Jono. Yeah, no, no worries. No worries. My On my streaming software, a, it's it's greened out. My recent shiny is actually a um a male cadabra. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it just doesn't want to show your screen. Oh, there we go, there we go. Caught that in an outbreak. Very nice. That's how I caught most of these, and of course. Speaking yeah, of yeah. Speaking of let's go, I've tried, I tried the game myself, the demo for it. I mean, it's awesome, but. Doesn't feel the same, but I'm not. I can't complain. Oh, you never bought the game? No, I never. Oh, have. wow, wow. Maybe I should one day. I mean, there's other games to buy. The thing is, they keep on releasing so many games. I don't know how you would ever find time to go back and play Let's Go because they did yeah. BDSP and Legends Arceus like in the same year, and then I'm I think gonna... they did do three games in a year. Once once Scarlet and Violet comes out, that'll be three major releases in one year. I mean, that's crazy. And of course, Jono, um, you're wondering how I was able to get some of these shinies um, through Go. Oh, really? Yeah. I was able to transfer, as I said, I was able to transfer extras I caught during community days or special events. And Oh, I'm sure, to- yeah. Because you can catch like 30 in a day. And I was able to, that's how I was able to complete some of my shiny living decks. I didn't complete the whole living shiny deck, just some of it in Sword right, Shield, right. Brilliant Diamond, Shiny Pearl, and Legends Arceus. Yeah, that's the goal is to get the shiny living decks. I usually, you know, I identify the good Pokemon games by which ones are, are good enough to do a shiny living decks in. And uh, yeah, Legends, I'm doing that right now, the shiny living decks. I'm debating if I'll do shiny living decks in Scarlet and Violet. I I don't know. The shiny hunting looks pretty good so far, so I think I'll probably end up doing it. That's cool. Yeah. Um, what it it really of- depends on what the raid shiny odds are, because one thing I did not like about Sword and Shield was the shiny odds in raids were full odds, and that's rough, especially when it takes a while to get the raid started and everything. So I'm hoping yeah, they do something better. Expect- I've had luck in Dynamax Adventures here and there. Oh yeah, Dynamax Adventures are great, but like the actual raids in the wild area, like the I never do those. They're the the shiny odds are so bad. Um, uh, speaking of um, Pokemon, the games. What is your favorite track in those games? Like, it could be from mm. it could be from riding a bike, surfing. I rock. know exactly what track it is. The Jubilife Village theme song in Pokemon Legends Arceus slams i love that track every time it plays i'm like entranced it's so good and also the midnight music on pokemon pokemon legends arceus it has like a little smooth jazz solo at the end it does like regular midnight music and then it like fades out and then it has like a little smooth jazz like midnight piano solo it's like it yeah the whole soundtrack for legends arceus is top tier but those two go down in history for me now, my favorite track, Jono, would have to be Jubilee Village's modern day counterpart, Jubilee City Day Night. I oh, really? Like, wow. I also like I also like Route 216, 217, which, of course, is the Alabaster Iceland in Legends Arceus. Mm, that makes sense. And I, my favorite track would have to be the Hoenn Dive theme. Oh, yeah. Because it's a fun track because it's... Especially when scuba diving, that track is always on Oh, the yeah, line. yeah. That's that's so related to your diving. Yeah, that's cool. And, and, and of course, I hope they do make a, a Pokemon game that takes place in Mexico one day. Yeah, that would be so cool. I mean, if they do the pyramids at Teotihuacan, uh, I think it's there. 
anyway, if they do the pyramids, wherever the pyramids are, I know there's a lot of pyramids in Mexico, but dude, that'd be so sick. I would, I would, oh my God, I would tear that game up. <laughs> yeah, me too. So I hope they bring back underwater action in, in a future Pokemon game. Yeah, that'd be cool. And I like how in Gen 6, though, I never played the remakes of Gen 6. I'll accept the demo for it, but the Gen 6 remake of Gen 3, the graphics are sharp. They did add scuba gear in for your character, mm -hmm. whereas in the original nice. game, you didn't I bet you that. love that. <laughs> yes. Do you think they'll do a Gen 5 remake since they did Gen 4 last? I, I probably think that could happen. Anything yeah. possible. I like the sound of it because that means we're that much closer to getting to a Gen, a Gen 7 remake. And I know a lot of people out there will be like, what? We don't need a Gen 7 remake. That's ridiculous. Remake. Maybe not a remake, but maybe a possible remaster because they could, who knows, maybe Game Freak and Nintendo could probably make a remaster of the 3DS game. I want to play them, you know, I like Alola is the one region I want to play like so bad because I love the beach and I love Alolan Raichu and Alolan Executor. And of course, me going to Mexico kind of makes, I've, oh, ever since I, the pan, during the time of the pandemic, let's say, I've been also watching some Pokemon too. Oh, yeah. And let's just say I kind of feel like Ash and Go when they go to the different regions. Let's just say throughout Gen 8 and this anime journey, I kind of been to some places I've been to in the past, which of course kind of reminds me of Ash going back to regions he's been to well they should do somewhere from south america or somewhere from africa or potentially australia because it's out there on its own and australia yeah. is a continent after all i would and, love to see uh, regions based on those countries and continents yeah because it's like you guys have got enough coverage of the other areas you know like or asia they you know somewhere oh no they they covered asia because they have japan well, so, well yeah they got it yeah, yeah, not all of Japan was actually covered. I hope they do go back to Japan and make some Right, region. it's true. But they do have four Asian regions, basically. So I'm thinking they got to do South America or they got to do Africa next. If Guaranteed. they do go back to Asia, maybe they could base it on China. Yeah, that'd be cool. I also um, want to see some regions. I'd like to see some parts of Japan that were never explored, you know, you know, to explore what's in between Kanto and Sinnoh. They may as well finish the job. I mean, if you got that many Japan regions already, you may as well just get all of Japan covered, you know? <laughs> and of course, I also want to see a region that's based on the area that covers that's after Kansai, but before but before Kyushu, in other words, in between right. Kyoto and Owen. The best Asian region they could possibly do would be India. Yeah, that would be a good place. Guaranteed. That would be a banger generation or a banger uh, like area. What do you call it? Region. I also, yeah, region. I'd like to, would you want to see a region based on the Caribbean? I think it would be okay, but they've got enough island regions going already that it's kind of like, what else are you really going to do with an island region? But India would be crazy. They're, they're, well, did you see the, the Indian themed Pokemon Unite uh, skins? For nope. like Venusaur, I think that was oh. on there like season two or something or season three. They had like this. It was really good. I was like, whoa, Pokemon knows how to do Indian stuff like really well. So I was really impressed with that. But yeah, a lot of people really liked that. I thought it was a good artistic direction. So I would love to see a region based on India. Yeah, that'd be good. And what I also have another question to ask you. What is okay. your favorite? That's right. I already asked what your favorite game was. Let's go. Wait, did I say let's go? Yeah, you did, but okay. I was gonna say <laughs> if you could go if you could play an original generation game, would you go back and play the original Gen 1 game if you could? Well no, because I had the chance to go back and play the original Gen 1 game, but instead I played uh Leaf Green because I just thought, you know, I'd like to at least have the chance to get a shiny, even if it's one in eight thousand ninety-six odds, like the worst possible odds. That is I'd still like to at least have the chance. And, of course, the original games don't have shiny Pokemon because they're just black and white. So, you know, yeah, I definitely played the the I played Fire Red, but I never finished it with Rest in Peace to the Fire Red series. And then I played Leaf Green. But what I actually did was buy a Leaf Green cartridge and I bought a Nintendo GameCube 
and I got the Game Boy Advance player that goes yeah, underneath Game Boy the player. GameCube, I had, yeah, and there's I a little had. DVD that goes with it, and and you you know you can play your cartridges. Oh yeah, man, it was um, so cool. So, no, um, we're we're gonna be running out of time soon, so I okay, have okay. one more question. What okay. advice would you give to fellow content creators who have a disability similar to mine? I would give you the same advice I would give any content creator, which is upload daily. It really makes such a difference to upload daily because it puts you in that mindset of like, I have a job to do. This is my job. I need to get the job done. And uh, it also forces you to create ideas on a regular basis. And it, it keeps your mind sharp so that you're, you know, um, and also it's really just good for the, the algorithm. Uh, YouTube really blesses you if you upload daily. And if you don't, they punish you. And I found that out the hard way. And that's why I went back to like, I moved recently and I had to stop uploading for like three months. And then even when I did start uploading again, I wasn't uploading daily. And I finally had to get back on track and get back to daily uploads, which is hard. It's very hard to do. It's one of the hardest things to do, but yeah. it is the best way to be successful. It's not very easy for me. I, I, I have, to, I'd have to come up with ideas. Well, yeah, that, yep, yeah, that's exactly that's right. I upload weekly mostly, but it's rare that I upload daily. That's, I'd have to come up with some ideas before I. Yeah, when I, when my channel got big, I was uploading, you won't believe this, sometimes six videos a day. And like, now that I look back on it, I'm like, how did I even have the time or the ideas? But I was just really passionate about what I was doing. And I had that many ideas. And what's crazy is some of those videos have a million views now. And YouTube actually like was YouTube was like, yes, bring me more content, which I don't know if it's like that now, but I definitely say the more the merrier because you never know which video is going to be the one that blows up and goes to a million. Well, Jono, I kind of have you to thank for inspiring this installment of the Road to Cozumel series. Yeah, cool, man. Take care and uh, hopefully I'll catch you in one of your live streams. This was a blast, Lewis. Thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate it. You too. All right. Bye, buddy. Bye. Well, that was a great interview I did with Jono. I hope you enjoyed it, everyone, as the next installment of my Road to Cozumel series interviews will feature the Halifax Mermaid and Mer Wrangler. In the meantime, this is Lewis saying, thanks for watching, everyone. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, and TikTok. And remember, it's time for adventure.